Oxley Workman. Nicely done with Todd Lumley playing the piano there. The great Todd. Wow, that's very beautifully done. I love that you had the, the laptop too. Well, it's for the loops. <laughs> the loops in your mind. Yeah, it's good, man. Well, the song is called What Would You Say to Me, uh, Lord, right? Yeah. And that's off Between the Beautifuls. Uh, Hoxie, it's great to see you here. Uh, out at the, a real the, pleasure to be here. Uh, the West Coast. I, I mentioned you're from a small town, Ontario, and you moved to, to Toronto. I happen to know uh -oh. that a lot of people moved from Huntsville have actually migrated to the West Coast. Did you ever feel the urge to come out here? When I was in high school, um, that seemed to be rather the predominant uh, career slash life path. In fact, I don't think it involved anything career-wise at all. So <laughs> right. most people decided it would be better to drop out, get a, a job as a, a operating a lift out at a hill and focus on smoking drugs and doing snowboarding. Not that that's what it's about out here. No, no, yeah. I've heard that that is a fallacy, which is why <laughs> why you didn't why everybody came it. back and yeah, got a good job. <laughs> I didn't make it out. I didn't make it. I, I, for some reason, missed that. How are you doing? I, I, you know, I, I saw you in the summer uh, in Edmonton, and, yeah. uh, and you were, uh, you, I mean, uh, you looked great, but you looked tired, and, and, and it's no joke. I mean, this has been a particularly fertile year for you. Two records of your own. You worked with Great Big C. You produced, well, I don't know how fertile you've yeah, been. Yeah, I hope not uh, so, so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You produced the Hey Rosetta album. Uh, 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 you stagged the album, of the, which was the uh, album of the year at the East Coast Music Awards. Uh, do you feel like it's been a bountiful year or, or, or a bit too much? I don't stop to think about it. I appreciate the fact that you can list that stuff and it sounds pretty impressive. For me, I always think I'm, always, I'm far less productive than I'd like to be. So. And I, do, I also find if I'm home by myself, I can get rather destructive. So it makes sense for me to, to stay... <laughs> stay at home or pardon me to stay when I say at home now I'm referring to my suitcase as I say right. home I imagine my suitcase right. and sometimes it's just better to stay in the suitcase and not go home and continue to do stuff the loops of your mind are yeah. continuing <laughs> it's, it's, it's like Dylan right yeah I, I, I doesn't know how to not stay on the road to home a certain extent a, yeah it's a, it's a place where I have probably too many unhealthy patterns and so it's better for me to stay away. Would that include eating late at night in front of the te television? No, so, no, it wouldn't, no. That, <laughs> <laughs> unhealthier than that, right. You've, um, you have won a couple of uh, Junos already. Uh, wh what does this mean to you? I mean, I, I don't mean it from the, the prototypical question of uh, how do you feel about being nominated, but really, do you, do, is this something that you, you put on a, uh, is it, does it matter to you to be nominated for a Juno and to be uh, out here for the Juno Awards? What matters to me is that I, I've been uh, pretty blessed this time out. I get to do your show. Um, I'm hosting the Songwriters Circle on Sunday. And then I'm playing with Great Big C on the big telecast on Sunday night. So my focus has kind of been putting that stuff together and the award part of it sort of slips away. But you, you know what it's like in the Canadian music business. Everybody's trying to keep their career buoyant, which means nobody's ever in the same place at the same time for mm -hmm. very long. And the best part about Canadian festivals or the Juno Awards is the hang backstage with people that you never get to see. Right. So that, I think, for me, it's the fun and seeing friends I haven't seen. But you seen know, despite in a all the success you've had in the past 10 years, y you have kept your music a bit outside the mainstream. You're not exactly a top 40 guy. Yeah. Right? And uh, in that way, you're, you're not completely unlike fellow Juno winner Matthew Good. And uh, <laughs> you, you, you might have heard some I recent, hear, recent yes. comments from Matt, Matt Good. He, he was quoted as saying the Junos are pointless and that they simply celebrate commercially viable music and that he doesn't want anything to do with them until they change. What's your reaction to that? Well, <laughs> I mean, it sounds like something from the 60s to me. I mean, the world has a, sh a certain shape to it nowadays. And we've all agreed to disagree in some ways with the shape of the world we've created for ourselves and these industries and these people and these methods by which we sell music and get music noticed. They're what they are. And sadly, we get to play by those rules. But without those confines, without the confines, there's no way to break rules. There's no way to be truly different and unique. So um, that whole selling out thing, I think... It feels like an old, an old statement to me. All right, you're happy, you're, you're fine to be here at the Juno. So, all right.
Yeah, absolutely. I think they're clapping for the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, love the 60s. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> he mentioned 60s. I'm kidding. Uh, I, this Speaking year, of which, I said to you off camera, and yes. now we're on camera, that your interview with Lightfoot was something else. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I'm sure you're, you're clapping for Gordon Lightfoot because it was, it was uh, remarkable to have that kind of pro- proximity to the man, yeah. Um, you, you are, <laughs> speaking of Gordon Lightfoot, this is yeah. a good segue, actually, because you're hosting the Juno Songwriters Circle, and there's some pretty big names on this, uh, Jim Cuddy, uh, Sarah St. Buffy St. Marie, mm-hmm. and I saw in the listing for this, hosted by veteran songwriter Hoxley Workman. Mm. Now, you've only been at this for about 10 years. How, how, how do you feel about veteran songwriter status? I feel that publicists, they, when, they, when they get the gig, they've got a certain dollar figure, and they're sitting around thinking, in order to justify this dollar figure, I'm going to have to come up with something that this bloody workman, I hate that workman, I don't know what he's, he's a total overrated creep, I don't get it, veteran songwriter. Right. Wow, you came from that kind of venom, well, I'm just No, I'm just saying that, who knows who writes this stuff, I don't know how vet veteranistic I Matthew Good has said no, are we still on Matthew Good <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Matthew Good called you a veteran yeah. I wonder no <laughs> I, I mentioned this thing of the, the producing and, and, and it seems like that you get uh, some of the wind in your sails um, comes from uh, I'm a big fan of Hey Rosetta I think that is such I'm a fantastic too, yeah. record uh, Newfoundland kids uh, Done well. You know, I know they're here this weekend. But you also produced Tegan and Sarah yeah. relatively early on. Are you, uh, is, that, is that part of what you want to be doing in music is, is, is sort of uh, playing a mentoring role despite the fact that you're not a veteran <laughs> songwriter yet uh, for, for younger, young acts? Um, well, you know, when I produced Tegan and Sarah's whatever, first or second record, we were both pretty young and same thing with Sarah Sleen and all of these artists I've you know I was really blessed early on when I had my first studio in Toronto I lived in it and it was a terrible place that stunk and there was no bathroom and you had to pee in the laundry tub but but it's, the blessed part is coming yes yeah. but the blessed part was is that through that studio I recorded and or worked with Spooky Rubin, John Southworth, Andrew Cash, the Sky Diggers, uh, Jason Collette um, and the list goes on and so I was sort of felt like I was this kid who was a drummer for hire and got all, and had these wonderful gigs alongside these talented people. And I've always, I think when I'm choosing to work with somebody else, I just try and find something that's real. For instance, Hey Rosetta is the real thing. They're, mm-hmm. they're not a sh- tight pants and hairdo type fashion band. Mm-hmm. They're a soul craving. We'll tell that's a hot, hot heat coming up. But we've, <laughs> but hot, hot heat are great too. Those guys, we were just chatting right. backstage. I said, what happened? You guys pioneered a sound and then the killers and Franz Ferdinand swoop in two yeah, years later yeah. and take it. And doesn't anybody say, Hey, you were the guys who did it first. I, no, what I, um, well, man, we could just clap all night. <laughs> yeah. And we will. That we, veteran, yes. I love the way he <laughs> talks. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's, a, it's such a pleasure to have you here. Thanks for, I know you, you just uh, flew in for this, uh, and, and, but you're going to be here, obviously, for the weekend. You're hosting the Songwriter Circle. You're performing on the Juno Night Show. You're nominated. Uh, it's great to have you here, man. Best Thank of you, luck, Gian. and we'll continue to, the story will continue, no doubt. Hoxley Workman, everybody, you, everybody. Hosting the Juno song, Songwriter Circle. Take a listen for him. And good luck on your Juno nod. Hoxley Workman. Mm-hmm.